Hello, and welcome to Take This TV, the television book club podcast, where each week we watch an episode or two of our favorite shows, and we talk about them with our friends in the fandom. That's you. Hello. I'm Carmen Askernees, and I'm joined as always by the amazing Kimberly Woods. Hello. Hi, Hot Potatoes. This season, we're watching Fallout. And today, we're on episode seven of eight. It's called The Radio. Oh. <laughs> The description. <laughs> Every generation has their own dumbass idea. This is your warning. If you have not watched mm -mm. up to episode seven, pause, go watch, come back and join us because ahead, there do be spoilers. So Ooh. let's get into it. Spoils. <laughs> yes. yes. Spoilers. Yes. Yes, spoilers. Uh, in this episode, Carmen, we find out <laughs> that indeed, uh, Mall Diver is... The head of that organization in the past who is opposing the vaults. You called it. Uh, she puts the seed of doubt into uh, the ghoul's mind. Or what is his name? Cooper? Wait, what is his actual name? Cooper? Cooper, yeah. Yeah, Cooper Cooper's Howard, mind. Yeah. Um, to spy on his wife because she says that she's done some research mm -mm -mm. or something. Some cold fusion research. Um, and was contracted with the wife's division, and she knows what's going on, and he doesn't really know his wife. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. I feel like she's lying. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. His wife does know some we'll things, see. but is sacrificing <laughs> for the family, so she's justifying it. So I do think, I do think she's ignoring some dirt in order to protect her fam bam God, you gotta <laughs> protect the fam bam <laughs> yeah, I gotta. you can't fault her for gotta that do it. <laughs> <laughs> i do love that like we have that moment where coop uh considers spying on his wife and then he throws it away but he has uh the, the <laughs> thoughts creep in in the night because he, you know what? He stayed up past 2 a.m. Nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m. And he should have went to bed, but no. he got the earpiece out. Yeah. I was worried when he just put it in the trash. I was like, oh, my gosh, is she going to find it in the trash before he even, like, gets to spy? And then it's already going to be found out. But now he gets it out of the trash. <laughs> oh, I and uh, uh, he does. The ghoul does call the dog dog meat this episode. Yes, he does. I was like, there it is. Dog me. Yes. Yes. He said the, name the, of the dog in the games. Was, he said it. He said it. It's dog me. It's official. <laughs> I love that. I love that they've already set up, like, you know, his dog in the past, that he's a dog guy, and he keeps running into dog meat. And in this episode, he finds himself with dog meat again. Poor dog meat got locked in the little Nuka Cola fridge <laughs> by the audience. Yeah, he went to jail. He was in jail for a while. Yeah, but like he got rescued. <laughs> that shot, some of these shots yeah. are so gnarly. I I couldn't watch the shot of Thaddeus and his foot in that whole, like, disgusting thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, this is like a show based on a video game. And, like, when the, when the snake oil salesman guy was like, oh, yeah, I got this elixir that can fix everything. At first, I was like, oh, you know, of course he's lying. Yeah. But apparently, it turns you to a ghoul? Apparently. He's just like, yeah, auto healing powers. Like, what? What is happening? I guess it turns you into a ghoul. I was wondering I have, what he meant when he was like, but there's radiation over questions. in Shady. <laughs> also, is that guy the same guy who was fucking oh, the ghost? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> the same yeah. guy. <laughs> I was like, uh oh, here he is. This, this can be no good. Sure enough. <laughs> Let me ask you. He doesn't you, seem is, trustworthy. Is the ship still alive in your heart, Carmen? Lucimus. Is the Lucimus ship, has it be? Has it been? Has it set sail again? Is it? Is it toot tooting along, or are you not aboard? <laughs> you know, every ship needs to toot toot along. But here's the thing. <laughs> Like I said before, I love me a chocolate vanilla swirl. Gots to have it. Good stuff. But, but I feel like Lucy is ignoring some red flags because Maximus does come clean in this episode. 
which I, I love that in that scene in my head, I was like, tell her the truth, tell her the truth. Me too. And he finally did. But there was a part of it, cause, but she was just like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter because the surface world is crazy. Will you move in with me? And I was like, Lucy, I know you've only been able to mess around with your cousins, but <laughs> there's some red flags here, my guy. <laughs> But I, I mean, you know, moment. to answer your question, I am like, yeah, I'm cautiously on the ship. I'm like on the ship by the lifeboat, ready to jump off. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think I was going to be back on the ship. I was like, oh, he he screwed it up. But they got me. They got me. He waited till the last minute to like admit his true name, but he did it. I was also during that scene like screaming at the screen, like, you better tell her, tell her now. <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> yes. and then he did and I was like oh thank goodness um, but I actually do love how forgiving Lucy is um, but also she blames it on the wasteland she's like hey look it's the wasteland I've been up here for two weeks and I threw acid in somebody's face you know like you grew up up here so <laughs> you know I, I like that she can kind of see people's like Core. like she's like you're you're a real you're a good person at heart and i i love that about her and how it affects the world around her and the people around her and i think she's a good influence on maximus and even maybe on the ghoul reminding of him of his old self so i i love the influence her character is having that's a good point because like she we did see sort of the ghoul kind of soften up a little bit when he was with her um well kind of <laughs> but more so of Max yeah. because um she yeah that is a lot for him <laughs> so it's gonna take a lot it's been 200 years but for maximus he chooses to leave his armor behind which ever since we first met him is all he's ever wanted and so it's like you know i mean there's a part of me that's like okay he's going from being obsessed about being a knight to being obsessed over lucy which is maybe also problematic but it's like he chose to give up the armor and do the right thing because lucy has influenced him so much and i think that's great. yeah that was a huge character moment because yeah he's like without the mm -hmm. fusion core i'm not a knight his facial expressions are hilarious by the way his little like pouty face i love the actress <laughs> by his it's so perfect for that part um but yeah i was impressed i was like okay oh wow oh oh he this is a big character moment like he is choosing right here and now that he's gonna like follow her and he's like given up what he's known for all of his life like this is huge and i think that's what helped me get aboard the ship again mm -hmm. was like that huge pivot that he made so yeah yeah <laughs> i i did love that moment i will say before we started recording i was telling kimberly i was like I do love this show, but of all the episodes, this one is my least favorite. Why? And I made him stop and not tell me because I wanted to hear it live so I could react in real time. So now please tell me, why is this your least favorite episode, Carmen? Yes, we wanted to share it with all of you. I just, I feel like there's too many things that resolve too quickly in this episode and nothing really has a moment to breathe. So like we have Thaddeus figuring out that he's a ghoul we have the brotherhood of steel showing up we have them getting the head back we have lucy and maximus getting together <clears throat> we have all the stuff in the past with the ghoul uh, or cooper howard when he's still a cooper like trying to figure out what's happening with his wife we have the ghoul uh killing that the son and like getting dog meat back like <clears throat> i think it's okay to like have all this stuff happening at once but it makes me feel like I think you know what it is. I think the moment that did it for me was when we found out that Vault 4 was not like an evil scientist vault and they were all just kind of like weirdo people who who are like survivors and it's like a refuge. And they cuz like they made it well, a they're joke. They descended from that which weirdness I think is though. Fine. Yeah, that's true. They are like the like the descendants and the survivors of the mad scientists of Vault 4. But and they're like cryogenically freezing people to help them and all this kind of stuff. But at the same time, I feel like, why didn't they say that? And I mean, I know why they didn't say it for the comedy of it all, but it just like, I think it's because the whole, we spent a whole episode, a whole hour <laughs> with that mystery. And then to be like, oh, haha, ha, it's nothing. 
it feels like if it was just like one contained adventure of like, oh, they go to this place and it's mysterious, but oh, JK, and now we're on our way. Like, I'd be like, oh, yeah. okay, that was fun. And that was funny. But it's like, we yeah. spent so much time building it up and we only have eight episodes. And that, because of that, we have to like rush through some other stuff that we care about more. Because like mm-hmm. when, when Lucy and Maximus finally kiss, like they even kind of play it for last with the guy watching like, hey, and then it cuts to the head and the heads are kissing. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, don't mix the salt and the sugar. Like, let me have this moment. <laughs> so that's funny. I don't know. I mean, you know, I think it's I think it's yeah. a matter of taste. I'm sure it's it's fine. <laughs> I just don't like that stuff. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, I enjoyed it, and then I I think, like to me, I'm like, okay, why spend so much time on that if it's not really about the vault? And I think it allowed them a to have the characters kind of shift their perspectives because for the first time. We got to have a taste of Maximus relaxing and realizing, like, how hard he's had it up in the wasteland. And, like, this is his first taste of, like, having what Lucy thinks she, you know, grew up with. And then Lucy kind of coming around to his side of things. So I feel like more so than the actual experiment that was happening, it was more about changing those characters' perspective and giving them the time to shift. And also I think it's setting up... Like, I agree. It's like, oh, that's it. Like, it was just bad experiment of, like, scientists gone mad. Um, And they were trying. I was surprised that they were, like, trying to help the people by, like, hybridizing them with um, people who were, like, not people, creatures who are immune to radiation. Like, that was the goal was to, like, if we hybridize, we can all be immune, like, these hybrid creatures. So they had this, like, good goal in mind. But the fact that it's, like, oh, it's actually not that bad. And in the same scene, the the overseer, not the overseer, co-overseer? Oh, no, the person, the lady that's under the main guy. And she's like, what experiment? Yeah, I don't know who she is. I don't know what she's called. <laughs> um, she asked Lucy about the experiment in Vault 33. And so I feel like it's also setting up like, oh, actually, that wasn't so bad. Ooh, but what is happening in 31, 32, and 33? And I know we've touched on those experiments and said things, but it's like, if this is okay, it it seems like it needs to juxtapose against something being really bad in Lucy's vault or around like, the Lucy's world that she doesn't know. So I wonder if like that's the purpose. Like we had yeah. we found out the secret, oh, it's actually not that bad. And then they're like, but what about your vault? And so I think maybe that reveal will be even I, larger now. Oh, man. I love that theory. I hope that that's true. I hope it's like something just like super McNasty gnarly, like Me something too. really bad. Like they're fucking, they're like eating people or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of green. which, but yeah, no, what, I did mean, you think I think... about, what did you think about investigator hacker Norm? I love Norm. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely probably my favorite character. I... <laughs> When he goes to Chet, and he's like, you're a coward, Chet. And Chet's like, we all are. We live in a vault. I was like, dang. Dang. Chet's been bars. Yeah. Like, well, can't argue with that. He's not wrong. (laughs) There was a part of me, though, like, when when the ceremony is happening and Norm kind of slips away to get on the overseer's computer, I was like, oh, Norm's been pushing his luck. And this might be the last straw, but thankfully he was able to get away, get away before anybody could catch him. But it's like, there's no way to cover up your tracks at this point. So Norm's all in. And then he goes into vault 31. And I thought that like when the vault closed, that was going to be the end of the episode. And it kept going. And I was like, oh, he's about to die. Like something gnarly is about to happen, but we don't get to see what he saw. Um, so yeah, no, I'm we really just hear, like, I feel like that's the storyline. That storyline and like, yeah, what does it right? mean? I don't know. We don't see anything. And I, I like went up to the TV and was like trying to see if I could spot anything near the screen. And all I saw was the like the mop moved once. And I still heard like, you know, mm. the robot sounds. But I was like, I can't see anything. What is he seeing? <laughs> oh, man. What does he see? But you're right. So the he robot like goes that, all like, in. It's is it like, the robot you know, that was like in the Super Duper Mart. Is that like, the could it be one of those? It kind of sounds yeah. like it, right? The same, like the same sort of robotic sounds. So that's what I thought. But yeah, 
And maybe, like you're saying, because we were talking about, like, cryo tubes before. Maybe there's, like, maybe they, un, you know, bring people out of their cryo tubes at certain times, the robot. But my my original theory was, like, while I was watching it and the door was opening and it's, like, all slow and dramatic. I was like, oh, his dad's going to be there. And, and his dad's going to be in 31. He's going to be like, what, dad? But I'm glad that that wasn't it because that would have been super cheesy. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to see what it is. I mean, I thought it was funny because he's pretending to be Betty. And then when he goes up there, I'm like, are they going to open it? Are they going to look who's coming in? Because clearly that's not Betty. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, because he but calls then, out. He's like, hello? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> like, it's a male voice. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad they I'm opened like, it anyway. Sound like Betty. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Guess they don't have the facial scan here. <laughs> or do but, you think that they're like going to try to indoctrinate him into Vault 31? I don't know. But I, I really was like, this is an all-in maneuver because it's like, okay, Norm, you're going in. You could get killed. So any information you learn, like, how are you going to get it back to everybody else? Like, even though you're like betting it all to learn this, like, don't you want to make sure you can like give everybody else a heads up? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot. Also, before Norm goes in the into there, uh, into the other vault, all of the raiders are killed because their food was poisoned. And it seemed like, out of all the people who I, were suspects, to me, it seems like Betty was behind it. What did you think? I either thought she was behind it or Stephanie, because Stephanie gets reassigned to Vault Thirty Two oh. with her with Chet, and. I think Stephanie was, like, putting it in somebody's mind earlier about the Raiders being bad or, like, oh, your father would have done something or, you know. And then she ends up being the overseer of the, you know, because she originally was from Vault 31 herself, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, I feel like she's behind it in some way. I don't know. I love that moment when Betty is, like... Oh, Go yeah. Ahead. Well, and murderous. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say uh, that moment when, when Betty named Steph the temporary overseer, interim overseer, and then Chet and Norm kind of have this look of like, oh, she's from 31. Not suspicious. <laughs> and so, here we go. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I love that we had Fred Armisen as the, the radio guy <laughs> out there with his booby traps. That was fun. <laughs> That, that was, was really funny, yeah. Uh, I also love the scene when um, when Lucy doesn't know what's about to happen after she's, you know, gone up to level 12 and she's supposed to be getting her punishment and you know, the overseas is like raising the sword about to come down and then he's like, you're banished to the surface. I thought that was great. And then, of course, <laughs> we get our knight coming, charging through, <laughs> causing destruction, and she's like, no, no. No, no, no. That's fine. Her knight in in dirty armor. Yes. <laughs> he abandoned also the look he gives his popcorn when in his robe. <laughs> when he sees her being like, you know, shuffled along with the thing over her head and he's like, Am I gonna give this up? Yeah. Guess I'll give this up. <laughs> it's really great. That's true love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think oh. about the ghoul um, getting information? When he was with the, the father and the son's thing? Or which which part? I thought yeah, it was interesting he was that we learned the son and the father. a little bit more about the scientists because the ghoul in that scene is like the enclave defector. And I was like, hmm, interesting. Mm. <laughs> That's what he was, an enclave defector. Oh, that scene was terrifying Suspicious. the way they played it too, where he was like eating the meat. <laughs> and like making the father think like oh is, could this be my daughter i hope not and then he like calls him out on it like <laughs> did you really think that it was you know her and that that was played really well yeah i was surprised was that he killed the kid i was like, dang he spoke yeah. that kid i mean yeah it is it, we definitely like with the ghoul I love when we get to see the juxtaposition between him as the ghoul and him as Cooper because, you know, Cooper is a good man for the most part, even though he's like the poster person for Vault Tech. 
Um, but the ghoul is sort of like someone who, no matter who's in his way, he's going to blow away anybody who's in his way to accomplish his goals. And he's just like a cold-blooded murderer. And it's like, what happened to this person? But I mean, 200 years and like being blown up by an atomic bomb, I guess, will do that to you. But... <laughs> yeah. But it is curious. Like, I, I love he plays that character so great because he's terrifying and I- and even though he's like should be just completely violent, he's still unpredictable in a way that like he might let you go. But it and he mm. says that thing like like he's already contemplated it about the sun, like, uh, you know, you're gonna be like you're even if I let you go, you're gonna hunt me down and I'm just gonna have to shoot you later or so. Like and then he proves him right though. He's like he grabs the So he's not wrong, sadly. And I wonder if, like, you I know, mean, the son, like, the actually of backed violence. off. I guess so. But the daughter's alive and, and the father's alive. He, he didn't kill the go? whole family. He didn't kill the whole family. That's true. I mean, who knows? The daughter might come back now, having been <laughs> indoctrinated into the cycle of violence, seeing her brother <laughs> killed, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The fact that he didn't kill everybody... I think says something about him. I think if he thought that the yeah. guy would let him go, he might have let him go. That's true. We haven't seen him kill anyone that has not already pulled a weapon on him. Yeah. So it's interesting. So, I like it. Maybe he has a code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the ghoul too. He's yeah. every time he's on screen, I'm like, somebody's <laughs> about to die. <laughs> But Maybe he is trying to do have unto one others. Episode left. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to do unto the others. Rule. The guy, yeah. he's, he's waiting until he gets drawn upon, and then he's like, "Well, <laughs> time, time to get you." Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we have one episode left, so hopefully we'll see what happens. Lucy's off on her own now. I loved, uh, you know, Maximus being like, "I'm gonna go distract the Brotherhood and taking the fake head, letting Thaddeus." go off because Thaddeus is also having the realization that he can't go back to the Brotherhood now that he's a ghoul so I'm excited mm-hmm. for that Lucy Maldiver face off and to learn what's in Vault 31 with Norm Ooh, we'll see we'll see <laughs> thanks so much for joining us y'all we're at Take This TV on TikTok and Instagram you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts Leave us a review, write us a comment, let us know your thoughts. And remember, it's dangerous to watch TV alone.